Hello everybody, what the hell is good? Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would just crack a cold one. Cheers to all of you who are also staying at home, being safe, not spreading the virus, taking this seriously, you're a champ. It has been a hot minute since me and you talked, like really talked. I feel like I've been on YouTube on and off, I'll come on, I'll make some videos, I disappear, this and that. I had a realization that the reason why I used to be so consistent at doing YouTube and really loved making videos is that I had, I felt like I had a genuine connection, as in like I talked about my life, I pretty much talked about everything, like I put it all out there. I always watch those videos where people asked on Instagram, what are your assumptions about me? And then they answer those assumptions and questions that people had and it terrified the living shit out of me because I just don't I, I already kind of know what people think sometimes and I like don't want to know but today I'm gonna bear it all I'm gonna like suck it up I'm gonna go through every single not every single one of them like the interesting ones and I'm just gonna let you in and let you know what the hell has been going on in my life I'm gonna start with an assumption you move apartments a lot never settling um, honestly, I don't know why I'm like this and <laughs> um, I have moved a lot throughout my life. Like I literally, since the year I moved to America, I've probably moved once every year or every two years. Um, there's been reasons for that. I've transferred a lot to colleges. I've moved, I've done different life changes, but I think for the last, like, let's say five years since I've been in Los Angeles, I have moved a lot and I'm sick and tired of it. I don't wanna move anymore. So once a year or two goes by, I just get this itch. I'm like, oh, I want a new place. I wanna redecorate. I wanna do this. I want a new area. And um, I give into it. My last move, however, was something that like I had to do um, because like as a, as a responsible adult, I had to make that decision to move because um, I sort of moved there on a whim. I was like in a pickle. I had to sign the lease really quickly. So I found that place that was available. Ended up being stuck in a super fucking expensive lease that um, by the end of it, it was just killing me and it wasn't even worth it. So I found a place that inspires me, that's cute, that's adorable, that doesn't cost like a lot of money, like that one. Um, and it, I'm happy here, I love it. One of the most asked questions on my channel is uh, whether I'm still friends with Kalel. And I never like publicly really, really addressed it. Um, I always get this, whether I do a Q&A or it's on a video, people always ask me about that. Um, are we as close as we used to be? No. Um, things have changed, we've grown apart, we've had a little bit of a falling out somewhere in there. I'm not gonna get into it because she's not here, so it wouldn't be fair for uh, me to kind of go into details about that. However, we're still in each other's lives. I feel like once you get a little bit older, it is so hard to establish like a real, genuine, like deep connection with somebody. So you kind of keep people in your life like that you had from when you were younger. So for me, Kalel has always been like my sister and she's always gonna be like my sister. I'm always gonna check up on her. We're always kind of just like, are you okay? What are you doing? What is going on? Like we always like, we'll gossip, we'll talk, um, but it's, it's not the same. But we're still in each other's life. We still love each other. At least I love her, so. When I ask people about assumptions, the single number one thing that people said, like I actually took screenshots of it, I couldn't believe how many of the same exact assumption that I got, so I have to address it. You wouldn't get married again. You don't want to get married. You don't want to get married. Like people assume that I never want to get married again. I do want to get married. I do want to have a family one day. I would love to do that. I never ever gave up on love. I never gave up on marriage. I've always been a hopeless romantic and I will continue to be that till the day I die. Um, however, I have become a little bit more uh, thoughtful and responsible with that. I guess it just kind of comes with like age, experience and maturity. I'm in no way rushing into any ki kind of steps in my life anymore. I don't want to pressure anybody to rush into those steps with me. If I'm dating somebody, which I currently am and I'm very happy, um, I would never want to push and pressure that person into anything. I feel like things like that are a very big decision. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen and it's going to happen at the right time. And right now I'm just enjoying my life and living my best life. And I feel like everybody should do that. Assumption, you had something done in your face. They meant to your face. What surgeries do you have? These are the questions that I get asked all the time. Um, I've been pretty honest, like over the years, just kind of like what I have had done. I feel like that's a very personal question that like nobody should feel like they have to answer, but I'm an open book, I don't care. Um, the only thing that like bothers me, like, like kind of bothers me, every goddamn time I upload a video, 
every, every, I'm not joking you. You can go and look on every single video. I get at least one to five to 10, 15 comments of people saying, your face looks different. And I, for the love of God, don't understand why. Because, oh, actually, I do. I feel like I have a versatile face where like, I'll take a picture one day and I look like a different person. And then I take a picture another day and I'm like, why do I look so different in these pictures? But I swear to God, I never do anything different. Like the only thing that has happened since the last time you saw me, yes, I do get lip fillers maybe once a year at the most, once every year and a half. Um, I also had under eye filler, which is like fills out like your little like under eye circles uh, almost two years ago. That is the extent of everything that I've done to my face and like my veneers, my teeth, that is it. But I swear every time I come on camera, whether like I change the lens a little bit, I change the lighting a little bit, the camera distance, I don't freaking know. Every time people accuse me that I've had something done to my face and I didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I've had my boobs done in 2015. I've mentioned that before. I love them, they're great. That's it. <laughs> Introduce us to your boyfriend. Okay, bebe. You wanna be my video? Yes. Come here. <laughs> this is Aiden. Hello world. <laughs> be nice. Why you wanna be my video? Why why are you so much darker than me? Because you're Mexican, that's why. <laughs> I feel like we should ask you a question. So people are asking me if I'm happy. Do you think I'm happy? The happiest. The happiest. Especially with me. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you guys want us to do a video together, let me know in the comments below. Let me know. Bang. He wants to do a mukbang. He's been like pestering me and like asking me to do a mukbang. Let her know down below that it's a great idea. <laughs> okay, baby. We need some Mexican food. We can do some Moldovan food. Mexican and Moldovan food. I would love that. Delicious. <sighs> ah, that's so cute. Well, yeah, that's my boyfriend. I feel like I am blushing so hard at this point. I had one beer and I'm literally red. As somebody who has shared their life online and I've shared my happy moments, my sad moments, um, like any person we go through, relationships, breakups, ups and downs, life changes, all that kind of stuff. Just so happened that mine was on camera and I wasn't gonna address this, but up until this day, people still have the audacity to say stuff like that. So I thought that, you know what? I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood to set this straight once and for all. You married your ex-husband so you can gain access to America and become a citizen. This type of statements and um, just judgments to, towards Eastern European women need to stop because guess what? Anybody gets out of a relationship, anybody gets a, you know, they separate, they break up, they divorce, they had their reasons. But anytime it happens when the woman in question is an immigrant, especially from an Eastern European country, people feel like they can say stuff like that. I have come to America on a student visa for which I have worked myself. Every single thing that I've had in my life has been because I have put work and effort into it. I have never had to depend on a man then or now or in the future, I've always done everything myself. If you think just because an Eastern European woman, whether it's Russian, Romanian, Moldovan, yes, we do have a soul. I feel like a lot of Eastern European women get that the second that they get out of a relationship. It's like, oh, like you, you got out of it because you wanted the green card. No, I will not wait six years of my life for a fucking piece of paper. And that is on that. What are your career plans for the future? Well, um, I've had an interesting couple of years. Um, I feel like when I started YouTube, I had so many things going on. I was going to school. I was, um, I started my jewelry line. I had like so many things. Like I was like so excited. It was all fresh and new. Like it, it was all like, we were just kind of pioneering the whole industry. So I was very excited and like, it's been what, 10 years since then? I started YouTube in 2010. Um, so I kind of hit a wall where like, I really didn't know wh who, like, what was I? Like, who am I? Am I a YouTuber? Like, am I a fashion designer? Am I a jewelry designer? Am I in, like, I, I didn't know who I was, to be honest. It's kind of like that, like YouTuber midlife crisis. I have always really enjoyed being creative, being creative. And like, whether I did a DIY, whether I did a fashion video, I did a makeup video, what, whether I paint something, whether I redecorate a room, I've always loved being creative. I always loved just kind of like making something and putting it into the world, whether it's through YouTube, then Instagram, now TikTok, whatever it is, I've always just loved that. So the difference between being a creator 
and a creator who depends on your audience online is that you can't just create, you have to like create and polish it and film yourself and do this and like put it online for people to appreciate. And if people see it, then your work is valid. If nobody engages with it or interacts with it and like nobody cares, then like you could have made the most beautiful, crazy piece of work and like video or like picture. If nobody like interacted with it, then it like means nothing. So with that being said, I kind of grew to like resent the fact that you have to be so reliable on like people appreciating what you're doing. You can't just do it. And like, you know, like an artist could like paint a painting and sell it. Or like you could like film a video for somebody and like charge them money. Where it's like as an online creator, you have to constantly, constantly like please a huge group of people. Now I'm not complaining. I think it's a blessing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to do this. This type of job is the dream of many. Um, but it happens to a lot of people that do it for a long time. They just kind of get like discouraged and confused and they don't really know like what they're doing, which has happened to me. But I really took some time for myself just to kind of like understand why was I doing this in the first place? What makes me happy? Why do I get so nervous filming? And the answer to the question, what I want to do with my career, I still want to be doing YouTube. I want to be doing Instagram. I want to be doing all of it, create the content that I want to do, find like a way to make people excited about stuff I'm making. So with that being said, I still love doing this. I know it doesn't happen often, but when I do get in front of a camera, it makes me happy. So I do not plan on stopping anytime soon. I think YouTube, um, Instagram, TikTok. Now I'm on, I'm on TikTok and I'm freaking loving every second of it. I've been having so much fun making TikTok. So go check my TikToks out. So yeah, social media is never gonna stop for me. I'm gonna keep going till the day I die, baby. However, I do have plans on doing something with a creative clothing line. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be something that I make by hand myself. Uh, I wanted to open like a little Etsy shop, just customizing denim jackets, like painting on them or painting on leather jackets or maybe painting on leather goods. Like it's something that I've been doing like for my friends just on the side, like a little side hustle. Um, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I might open an Etsy shop and like paint stuff for you. So I don't know. But yeah, something in fashion, keep doing what I'm doing with my social media and we'll see how it goes. Woo, well, that was fun. Um, I hope that you guys had fun just hanging out with me for a little while. I had so much fun answering all your questions. If you have any more questions, please leave them down below. I will be reading them and answering them for you and also maybe addressing them in a future video. Um, also, the giveaway winner um, is going to be announced on my Instagram. By the time you're watching this video, I will announce and message the winner on my Instagram, which I will pick out today. So by the time you're watching this, you're already gonna be a winner for the Gucci jacket. And I hope that you all stay safe and sound and sane during this craziness happening in the world. I love you guys so much. Bye!